Sure. Thank you, and I'll, I'll respond to that. The, the first part of the question, I think, was about the role of the Government Advisory Committee and what it does. Uh, it is a, a, an advisory committee to the Board of ICANN, uh, which offers official advice to the Board of Directors, and uh, which it does on a very frequent basis, uh, both verbally and in writing, and has an extremely important role. And its, its considerations must be considered by the ICANN Board, as Peter could explain in more depth. Res with respect to the question about uh, delegation uh, of CCTDLDs or the country code top-level domains, uh, it, that is a, 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 a very sensitive issue that is handled according to strict guidelines. Uh, and, and delegation processes are public in terms of the, the policies that are published, but delegation activities are always private between the country code operators and the ICANN IANA function. So I can't comment specifically about any uh, delegation activities uh, in, in, in Africa. Uh, that is up to those country code operators themselves to, to discuss. We do not do that. We don't have the right to discuss that. Uh, but I, I, it, it's not been brought to my awareness that there are significant uh, issues there, but perhaps there are. Um, and, and that is handled by the IANA group. And the, the last uh, comment uh, is about the globalization of, of uh, ICANN. I, clearly, I think we have a long way to go. Uh, ICANN, the internet was started as a US government research project in 1969, over 40 years ago. And the, and the internet is on an arc from being uh, what effectively was 100% American when it started to moving towards 100% global. And ICANN itself, as an organization that was created by the United States government to give coordination uh, over to the private sector globally through a multi-stakeholder body, through an organization uh, created in California, but also operating under international law, uh, as was also uh, mentioned in the recent uh, panel declaration. Uh, and in terms of the recent officers, uh, uh, all three are American. Uh, and all, all three uh, uh, processes, except for the DC position, had, had, had quite a significant number of candidates. But the candidates that won the positions, based on their experience in the end, and were chosen by uh, the, the management team, uh, had, had those attributes. I think that we'll be looking in the future, certainly, a CEO. I do want to see the operations become uh, more global. We have a financing challenge. Over 90% of our revenues uh, as a nonprofit on the domain names come from North America. So uh, most of the country code operators in Africa and around the world, uh, many of them do not make a contribution to ICANN's operational activities. And so one of the issues we need to look at and address over time is how to have the support of the world so that we can also operate fully in the world. And there's, there's some uh, uh, soft relationship there. But certainly my goal as CEO is to see the organization uh, become significantly more global over time. And Peter, you, you might wish to expand on, on the GAC role since that really reports into you. Let me take the last point first about the commitment to internationalization. That is very strongly a board commitment and in fact in relation to the tasks the board has given the CEO to carry out. Increasing internationalization of ICANN is one of them. Uh, and we are monitoring that performance uh, because of the commitment that we've made. We already do have a significant uh, element of internationalization, and if you take the board itself, it's chaired by someone from New Zealand, the vice chairman comes from Ireland, and we've got uh, representatives from Norway and, uh, and, and Chile and, and countries in between. Uh, the stakeholders themselves come from all over the world, and we, uh, we're seeing that here at this meeting. There's uh, about 43, I think, about 40 different countries represented in the Government Advisory Committee, and probably at least that number coming uh, in the meetings. The, the formality of the GAC is that if, when the GAC gives the board advice, we are required to take that very seriously and to follow it, unless we respond in writing saying why we're not. Uh, let me also just pick up on the delegation, redelegation point. One of the reasons for the formation of the country code names of board organization, one of the major policy shops in ICANN, a corporate division, if you like, of the, of the company, deals with country code managers. That organization has the policy, has the power and responsibility under our bylaws for making the rules about delegation and redelegation. That group has set, has set up a working group, and I spoke yesterday at the launch of the working group, that's going to make sure that the policies that we use for delegation and redelegation of country codes are appropriate. And I'm pleased to report that that meeting was very well attended 
by a wide range of country code managers, but also by a wide range of officials from government with whom the CC people are working very closely. So, as a matter of process, the, the delegation issue, I think, is being properly addressed at the right level. My name is Alex from CIO East African Magazine. I just wanted you to uh, expound on uh, the IPv6 uh, issue that you are saying that uh, there's a myth that there's an availability of uh, IPv6, uh, IPv6 addresses in Africa. I just wanted you to explain on that and expand on that. The Internet Protocol 6 is a new version of the Internet Protocol for routing uh, messages and packets around the world. Uh, one of the major reasons IPv6 was developed was that the network address space in IPv4 was limited to around 4 billion addresses. And uh, most of those have been allocated. We have less than 10% of the IPv4 space remaining. Uh, that was one of several motivations, motivations for IPv6. Under IPv6, there are approximately 300 million trillion trillion potential addresses available. Uh, and there's been a mythology and stories spread out there by certain parties that there's not enough internet addresses for developing countries. Nothing could be further from the truth. We have more than enough internet addresses to give one trillion internet addresses to every man, woman, and child in the world, and certainly including the continent of Africa. Uh, those are available. Uh, they're distributed through AFRINIC, which is a regional internet registry which there's five in the world. AFRINIC is an excellent registry, founded by Nick Quainar, who's also at this event. And AFRINIC has 800 members. It, it itself is a collaborative body. 800 members, which are internet service providers, technology companies, other businesses that need internet addresses to use or share with their customers. Uh, AFRINIC has what it, all that it needs in terms of internet, six addresses, and it can get more at any time that it needs them from ICANN. It is already distributing them, and all any member needs to do is fill out a very simple form and state that they have a need and they will receive them. So uh, this mythology about IPv6 addresses not being available in Africa or not being available to enough uh, 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 companies is, is, a, is a complete fabrication. It is not true. And it's important that that truth come to the table that there are enough addresses because some companies might be holding back from planning to leverage or use IPv6 addresses if they do not think that they're available. And again, AFRINIC has assured me that they will distribute at any time to any of their members who request, and we further commit to support AFRINIC to make sure, we, we make sure AFRINIC has what it has, because ICANN is the central global authority in, in allocating network addresses. Those go to the regional internet registry, such as AFRINIC, which then get distributed to their members. Around the world, there's about 30,000 members in the entire system. So there is not a lack of IPv6 addresses. There's a flood of IPv6 addresses. It's an enormous number. And we're delighted they're already being in use in Africa. To be clear, the whole global internet today is only actually using a few billion internet addresses. So when any member in Africa gets over a trillion, which is the smallest allocation, they have over a thousand times all the addresses in use in the whole world today. So there's no lack, there's a surplus, there's, a, there, there's more than enough. And so we're happy to allocate them. And we'd like to hear from you anywhere you hear that uh, someone represents that that's not the case.